The former Yugoslav Republic of North Macedonia is the newest of NATO's 30 member states. Since it joined two years ago, it's thrown its support behind Ukraine's conflict with Russia and it's hosted NATO exercises. But it still hasn't started negotiations to join the European Union, even though it was made a candidate country 17 years ago. I'm Andrew Hopkins and I've been speaking to North Macedonia's Foreign Minister, Buyar Osmana, one on one. Foreign Minister, thank you for talking to TRT World. First of all, I wanted to ask you about the war in Ukraine because it's going, been going on for several months now. Uh, in the last few weeks, there seems to have been increased Russian operations in the Donbass region, and there's more weapons, it seems, than ever coming from the West to Ukraine. In some cases, even more advanced weapons, like from the United States at the moment. So what's your analysis of this situation and how can we bring this conflict to an end in the near future? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, our stance on the Russian aggression in uh, Ukraine has been unequivocal in condemnation of the aggression, considering it as a blatant violation of the international rules-based uh, uh, order and an attack on the security, European security architecture. And we have uh, been solidarizing with Ukraine and its people in providing humanitarian but also other aids, uh, including military aid, and certainly open our borders to accept uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, refugees. We have joined all the packages of sanctions of uh, European Union, thus aligning 100% with Euro European common uh, security and foreign uh, policy and uh, certainly uh, other me restrictive measures be being undertaken from 2014 onwards since the Crimea being uh, annexed. Uh, I was just recently in Kyiv, just uh, 10 days ago, and met uh, my colleague uh, Dmitro Kuleba. I visited uh, Irpin and I saw the devastation myself with my own eyes. And I, uh, as I said there, it, uh, it's beyond words what I saw there and uh, therefore it is important that we keep supporting Ukraine and its people in this right, righteous resistance and a fight uh, that they are doing at the moment. They are not just fighting for themselves, they are fighting for the values we share. They are fighting for the right of independent countries to exist, such as North Macedonia. So from your point of view then it's important to give Ukraine as much support as possible until it achieves some kind of victory, as it were, in this conflict? No, certainly we, uh, as, as I told my uh, colleague uh, Çavuşoglu today, we encourage and we praise the efforts of uh, Republic of Turkey to engage in bringing together uh, the two sides in order to find a way uh, forward and to uh, find some uh, peaceful settlement. Uh, but uh, certainly we cannot uh, go against with the values that are in breach now in Ukraine. Now you've mentioned as well that you've supplied weapons, military equipment to Ukraine so far. Can you tell me a bit more about that? What have you supplied exactly? Quantities, that kind of thing? Certainly some, some information are uh, sensitive and confidential, uh, but we have uh, been in close coordination with our NATO allies with our EU partners and with uh, Ukraine in order to provide the necessary means for Ukrainians to defend themselves. So this is uh, not a, a, a weapon that has been delivered to Ukraine in order to attack uh, another country, but rather to defend itself and to defend uh, uh, civilians. Um, now, in the last few days, there's been these reports that Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, wanted to fly to Serbia for a visit, but the airspace over your own country, also Montenegro and Bulgaria was closed and he couldn't make that trip. So can you confirm that that actually happened? Were you also in cooperation with Bulgaria and Montenegro on this and, and why did it happen? North Macedonia has closed its airspace uh, several weeks ago as a response to the Russian aggression in Ukraine. And uh, this request from the Russian embassy for a special f permission on this flight has just uh, fallen within the frames of this general decision about closing the airspace for uh, Russian-owned air companies. Uh, 
uh, therefore uh, we uh, we decided so uh, this was not is not a stance against russia or russian people this is a stance against its policies and its deeds it's about is a stance on uh, aggression of russia in uh, ukraine and uh, therefore we will be in line with uh, our NATO partners, as I said, but also with uh, like-minded countries in order to send the right message that we cannot introduce the uh, rules of jungle now in the 21st century. Now at the moment we've got two countries, Finland and Sweden, who want to join NATO. Um, how do you feel about their applications? The, how important is it to accept them as, as members quickly and also about Turkey's concerns about uh, their admittance as well? We have been supportive and I think the government of North Macedonia was the <clears throat> one of the first countries that uh, uh, organized an extraordinary meeting of the, uh, of the government to adopt the decision or to instruct our mission in NATO to approve the request of Finland and Sweden since we see it uh, as of added value to our alliance. Uh, Finland and Sweden have uh, a, a modern military, uh, have modern armies and we think that by uh, joining NATO it will strengthen, strengthen the northern flank of uh, NATO and it will make all of us uh, better, better protected. Certainly we are aware of the concerns of Republic of uh, Turkey. I spoke with uh, uh, my colleague Çavuşoglu today in length about their position and I, we encourage the talks that uh, uh, are taking place between Finland and Sweden, NATO and uh, Turkey in order to find a way uh, forward in this process. But we do in encourage this process to move as soon as possible since the times are challenging. The eastern flank of NATO has been challenged and we need to strengthen uh, that part of uh, our area. Do you have sympathies with Turkey's position in terms of you know, acknowledging the PKK as a terrorist organisation, also the, the YPG in Syria as a terrorist organisation as well? I think it's important as uh, partners that they speak frankly, they talk, uh, they listen to each other about their concerns. Uh, I believe that they share the same uh, views about what's happening and uh, what should happen in the future and therefore I'm optimistic that they will find a way forward. Um, I wanted to ask you also about your relations with Bulgaria as well because they seem to have been quite difficult in the last few years. Now you've got yourself, you've got a relatively new Prime Minister and they have as well, both in the last six or seven months. Um, and it seems a, a sort of a six-month kind of framework has been proposed between your two governments to sort out all your differences, which seem to uh, revolve around a dispute over the nature of the Macedonian uh, national identity. So where are things at the moment? Is this six-month sort of framework, uh, are you making progress on that? In 2017, uh, North Macedonia and Bulgaria signed uh, a, a, a treaty that opened a new chapter of trust and cooperation between the uh, two countries, uh, uh, hoping that this will uh, manage the differences that countries had been having uh, throughout the years. Uh, unfortunately, a perfect storm of uh, conditions happened uh, to bring this trust to the lowest level. And I would mention here the pandemic that disabled the uh, possibility for the working groups that have been established with the treaty to meet regularly and to try to discuss and overcome the differences. And then uh, the political, uh, internal political dynamics in Bulgaria, just to remind you that they had three rounds of uh, consecutive election, uh, electoral processes without being able to form a government thus having a technical government in place without a full uh, power and full mandate to discuss uh, uh, political issues. And these, this gap of two years of not being able to properly communicate with uh, uh, Bulgaria uh, 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 contributed to the loss of trust. And I think that this loss of trust has been the basis 
for all the complications that emerged later on in the, in the process. So we were so hopeful when the two governments uh, uh, were completed all at the same uh, time uh, during, in the beginning of this uh, year and therefore we uh, launched this six months project to work to form working groups to tackle different aspects of the issue and then to wrap up this project within this uh, six months uh, cycle uh, by delivering uh, a comprehensive agreement that will be a sustainable long-term solution to the differences that we've been uh, we've been facing. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't go as we planned, uh, since uh, obviously the, the dispute that we have is uh, overloaded with emotions. And as I often say, issues that uh, uh, are burdened with emotions lack rationality. And it's very important that you tackle carefully these emotions in order to peel them off until you reach some rational core of the pro problem and then you find a rational solution uh, uh, to it. And as well, what's the, the current state of your EU application? Because um, the, the dispute with Bulgaria has effectively been holding that up because you've been a, a candidate country for, for 17 years now. North Macedonia was one of the uh, first countries to, in the region, in the Western Balkans, to start this process. It was in a group with uh, Slovenia and Croatia. We have signed, a, uh, we signed the Stabilization Association Agreement with the EU, which means the formal start of the association process few months before Croatia. Croatia this year marks eight years of its membership. We have not started the accession process yet. And this is a showcase of the, uh, how, how long it took for us, how unpredictable this process have become to us. A perception that this is, this is becoming a moving target, which is creating a frustration among our people in the, uh, in the region. From 2005, we have the status of candidate country. From 2009, European Commission, every single year consecutively, uh, uh, gave a recommendation to the Council that North Macedonia has fulfilled all necessary criteria to start the accession process. Unfortunately, always it faced a resistance in the Council due to issues not related to uh, meeting criteria, to the European uh, agenda per se, but uh, we will continue since we don't have an alternative. Our region is geographically, historically, economically, culturally part of Europe and it one day will be part of European Union. Foreign Minister, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.